In this lesson, I'm going to talk about some of the more advanced configurations and other options for image deployment. I previously talked about being able to deploy WIM files using Windows deployment services. But also remember I said you can deploy VHD or VHDX files. This is configured exactly the same way as a normal image. But instead of pointing to a WIM file, I'm just going to select a VHD or VHDX. And it will then use that boot to VHD technology. Because this is a Windows Server 2008 R2 and above feature, this would not be available for Windows Server 2008 operating systems. I also previously talked about creating that discover image and those capture images if you don't want to actually boot over the network. And I went ahead and created one of these and it gives you a new unique WIM file. Now to actually leverage this file, what you're going to need to do is use the Windows Assessment and Deployment Kit, which is what I talked about earlier, that gives you all those great tools for image management, creating those answer files. And it actually has detailed help on how to actually take your own custom WIM file and burn it to a DVD or even a USB drive using the new Make WinPE Media command, UFD. Microsoft also has some great documentation at this link here that actually talks you through step by step using that discovery image WIM file you created, leveraging that Windows assessment and deployment kit to actually go and create that media as well. So you have a number of different places to go and actually get help. When you think about what to put in the image, try and keep your images as plain as possible. You don't really want to put applications into those images as it will age the image. Every time an application gets updated, you'd have to effectively go and update your image, which is a lot of work. Try and keep the images as plain as possible and then layer on roles and features and applications afterwards using answer files and post deployment steps. If there is a major update to an operating system, at that point you may want to update the image to contain that new service pack and save you basically time patching things after deployment. Remember, you want to keep your images patched though. And in Windows Server 2012, which is what we're talking about, you can use the DISM command. So this is a script I created that automatically patches a WIM or a VHD file. But in here, I just want to show you, you can mount a WIM file using DISM. And then essentially what I do is I pass through a folder with MSU or CAB files. And then using DISM, I specify that image and add in the package of that patch. So I can add patches, I can add drivers, I can even add software directly into an image, be it WIM or VHD, using the DISM command. So that's a really powerful feature on how you can keep your images up to date. If you do create your own images, you need to make sure they're generalized. This means it removes that unique SID, that GUID information. Sysprep is part of the operating system. And you would just run sysprep slash OOBE out of box experience, generalize and then shut down. Once it's shut down, you could then go ahead and capture it using the capture media or boot from your own media and use ImageX to capture that. There are other deployment options. The Microsoft Deployment Toolkit really builds on Windows deployment services. It gives you a very light touch capability. Instead of having to use System Image Builder, for example, to create those answer files, it does a lot of the work for you. It integrates very closely with WDS to do that heavy lifting and give you a very nice interface to manage it and also get up and running very quickly with the various options you want to configure. I certainly would always recommend using the Microsoft Deployment Toolkit if you're using Windows Deployment Services. In larger enterprises, you may actually want to use System Center Configuration Manager. This actually leverages Windows Deployment Services for the Pixie Boot capability, but then enables you to create complex task sequences for an operating system that not only deploys the operating system, but also if I actually edit my task sequence, I can have very, very complex sequences of actions. Joining the domain, deploying applications, patching it, enabling BitLocker. All of these different types of actions are available to me within Configuration Manager. Enabling me to do a zero touch deployment. Basically nothing needs to be entered or selected on the end machine. It's automatically configured. If I'm talking about virtual machines, I previously actually showed you 
And in my test, I used a virtual machine. And we can see that deployment actually completed. I could now log on to it. It automatically joined the domain. Notice what it did, that unique username. So it was domain admin. The database is what it created. But I'll log on as the domain administrator. And it's that server core version. And it did install it to the C drive. So it installed the core version of the operating system. So that just completed for me. But I typically wouldn't want to do this with virtual machines. As you saw, I had to configure this to have a legacy network adapter to enable me to do Pixie Boot. And then I'd want to replace this with the synthetic network adapter to get the best performance. If you're deploying virtual machines, you really want to take the approach of creating template virtual machines, template virtual hard disks, which can then be very, very quickly just copied over the file system to the new virtual machine you wish to create. Now, ideally, you would use something like Virtual Machine Manager. So Virtual Machine Manager, again, is part of System Center 2012, and this enables you to fully create those virtual machine templates. If I go to my library, I can actually see I have virtual machine templates in here. Now I've got Linux, I've got Windows, I can deploy different types of hardware configuration or from a single VHD file. I don't have to have one VHD for each template. These can all point to the same VHD file. I can configure steps I want to perform in terms of automated answer files, in terms of configuration of the operating system, configuration of administrative passwords, roles, features, answer files, run once commands, application SQL configuration when I use this as part of a service template. So for physical machines, for desktops, Windows Deployment Services is a great solution as is Configuration Manager. If you want to deploy virtual machines, you really want to look at virtual machine templates, be it manually copying a VHD file from a template you created, and once again, that would be sysprept, or using a technology like Virtual Machine Manager to not only deploy that VHD file, but also to actually configure the virtual machine to customize as required.